Thanks for watching the Silver River Chairs channel. I wanted to share with you some tools for shaker tape, splint, and rush weaving. As you can see, seat weaving is a very diverse craft. There are many types of materials. Here we have shaker tape, binder cane, splint reed, smoked reed, bark, paper rush, pre-twisted natural rush, and seagrass. And they all use very similar tools and they will all fit in this one little toolbox. Most importantly, you'll need a chair with four round rails. Before you do anything, take a good picture of your chair so you can get a before and after shot. So if your chair has material on it, you'll need to take that off. And you can use either a utility blade for rush um, or some snips or scissors, scissors for shaker tape, scissors usually for splint. Um, you'll often need needle nose pliers to pull out any tacks that might be in it's on the side rails. Give your chair a good wipe down. Uh, you don't want any dirt or dust getting into your new seat. And I think that's about it. Trash can to throw it all away in. So you've got the material off of your chair and the chair is clean. Now uh, check with your suppliers to help you understand how much material you will need for your particular chair. You can get a list of suppliers on our website at silverriverchairs.com backslash resources. We have all the links there for everybody. Let's talk shaker tape. Shaker tape comes in a variety of colors and sizes. So check with your supplier to figure out how much you'll need for your particular chair. We need to measure your chair seat. We'll show you how to do that in our shaker tape video, but you'll need some sort of ruler or measuring tape. You will also need a little bit of foam to stuff the seats. Usually with shaker tape, we start with a tack. If you have a pneumatic stapler, an air compressor, this is gonna save you a lot of trouble because the tacks are kind of fumbly, but the tacks are a number three steel cut tack or an upholstery tack. Don't use aluminum, they will bend very quickly. These may bend too, just be patient when you're working with these. You might need needle nose pliers to hold it steady while you hammer it in. If the tacks do bend, these wire snips are pretty helpful in pulling them out so you can retack. Speaking of hammers, you'll need a small hammer. You can use a large hammer, but you know, you start to feel it in your forearm after a while. We like this nice little uh, ball peen hammer. As you are wrapping the warp, which comes first on your shaker tape chair, you may or may not want to take a break. And if so, you will need a clamp. Just make sure it's comfortable for you to use and it will grip. We have a couple of things that we do that are kind of helpful uh, little tips and tricks. You will need masking tape, some sort of a pushing tool. Uh, these little paint scrapers work nicely as a ramp and these work to help push the material through as you're weaving. One thing we really love is this caning needle. It's, uh, it's round and it's a little too thick for caning in my opinion, but it works really great for threading the shaker tape through. And hopefully you have enough material to get your chair fully warped and woven. But should you come up short, you may need a needle and thread to splice together two new pieces of shaker tape. We like this Glover's needle that is a little stabby, but it really does get through those layers of shaker tape. So be very careful. And the thread, ideally you'll be hiding it beneath uh, a strand underneath. You might not need matching thread, but it's always nice to have just in case. As you get to the end of the weaving process, you'll really need to use the ramp and your pushing tool and possibly even the needle nose pliers to pull the material. Um, at the very end of the weaving process, you'll need to secure it and you certainly need your punch, your hammer, and one more steel cut tack or a staple. That's it for shaker tape. All right, so for splint weaving, you've got an empty chair, you've got one to two coils of splint reed, a tub, a couple of towels, maybe even a spray bottle. You have your splint reed soaking and while you're doing that, you gather your tools. If your chair is gonna be an indoor chair, then you might wanna stuff it with foam. It helps the seat last longer. Uh, you'll need a piece of one inch foam and you will turn your chair upside down on it and trace your pattern out with a Sharpie. If your chair is gonna be outside, don't use the foam. 
you'll have to start with a splice on the splint reed and we'll show you how to do that in the video but in order to do that you will need something to secure your two strands together you can use a stapler if you like but that does puncture the material we like to use this wire it's a 24 gauge galvanized steel wire and it is removable uh, the staples technically are removable but they do puncture the material so we like to use this to secure the first strand to itself so you can start doing the warp as you are doing the warp if you want to take a break your clamp is your best friend it is your third or sometimes your fourth hand at some point you're going to need to cut off some length you can obviously use scissors to cut your splint reed but these snips work really well pop and it's gone Adjusting is very important during splint weaving. You may have to tap the material down the side rail, or you may have to tap the material toward you to make room on your seat for more material. We just use a little ball peen hammer and a flathead screwdriver. As you're weaving, you might find that you can just reach under and grab the material and pull it through. Eventually, this is gonna put a hurting on your cuticles. So get yourself a ramp a little butter knife or the end of a spoon or a little paint scraper putty knife does really well you just insert the putty knife into the material and with your other hand push the splint reed up onto the ramp now let's talk about rush you'll need your empty frame you will need a tub of water and a towel also a spritz bottle if you are using pre-twisted natural rush or seagrass it would be very helpful every time you are working with it to have masking tape on either end so it doesn't untwist. Unless your chair frame is perfectly rectangular like this footstool, you will need to measure out the gussets. And to do that, clearly you will need either a ruler or a measuring tape. You will also need a pencil to make a line for where your gusset marks are. You will need the super fun number three steel cut tacks to start your project. And unless your chair is perfectly rectangular like this footstool, you will be using a lot of tacks at the very beginning of the project. You may want to invest in an air compressor and a pneumatic stapler if you're gonna be doing a lot of rush. It will save you a lot of time. If you don't have the pneumatic stapler, then you'll be using the tacks. These needle nose pliers might be very helpful in holding them steady while you hammer. A small ball peen hammer, possibly a punch. Your clamps will definitely be your best friend for rush. These snips work really good for cutting rush. We almost never use any other tool for cutting rush. Just pop and it's done. Once you've got your gussets filled in all the way to the line, you can put your tacks away and your punch. Adjusting is very important to the rush weaving process. It can get really messy if you don't adjust your strands every three circuits. So you will use this ball peen hammer and this flathead screwdriver a lot. About halfway through the weaving process, you're gonna need to cut some triangles to fill in these spaces. So you will need corrugated cardboard, preferably brown and not colored, and something to cut it with. At the very end of your weaving process, it might be helpful to use a little bit of masking tape and your needle nose pliers to get the rush out of these really tight spaces. You'll use a knot to finish and it just kind of extra insurance if you put some glue on that knot. So just have some wood glue handy for the end. Just dab a little bit on and then use a paintbrush and kind of coat all of the surface of the knot. So that's all you need for splint, shaker, and rush. Uh, they all fit conveniently in a little tool case. If you're taking a class with us in the shop, we provide everything. If you are a student and we send you a materials kit, check your email for a list of stuff that is included in the kit and anything else you'll need to supply on your own. If you are just the general public, we appreciate you working with some of our fantastic suppliers. Again, you can find that link on our website, silverriverchairs.com backslash resources. Thanks for watching the Silver River Chairs channel.